Hey guys, and welcome to episode 87 of the OCDstories.com podcast. Now, today's episode is sponsored by CBT Solutions. They are based just outside of Baltimore in Lutherville, Maryland. They treat children and adults suffering with OCD, general anxiety disorder, and related disorders such as hoarding and trichotillomania. They primarily use CBT, but also introduce acceptance and commitment therapy, as well as mindfulness. If you are in Baltimore or the surrounding areas or Lutherville, head over to cbtbaltimore.com. That's cbtbaltimore.com. So uh, you may have noticed the snazzy intro uh, that I've added to this week's episode, and it's going to be added to every episode going forward. Um, It was done by my good friend, Eddie Jenkins. Uh, Eddie is a listener of the podcast, and I got to meet him a while back and since become friends. Uh, And he he did me a favor here by creating his intro. He is a great musician in his own right. Um, He's having some real success, definitely in the UK at the minute. Um, He co-wrote a track by Sub Focus called Don't You Feel It? Uh, And also um, the song, he co-produced the song, uh, More Than Friends by James Hype. And that track is actually number eight as of the time of this recording in the UK Top 40 music charts. Um, so yeah, credit to him. He, he's a great musician. Um, and uh, do him a solid if you can by uh, listening to those tracks on Spotify or um, even just going to YouTube and just you know racking up views on those videos. Um, show him some love that way he's he's done me a great favor and hopefully it eases you into every podcast going forward um yeah thanks again to him uh and uh, this episode is uh is with ryan demont i'm gonna lose my words here uh ryan's a great guy i got introduced to him uh through steven of nocd uh, the app that also sponsors this podcast um link in the show notes as, as always um but yeah, so Stephen pushed in my way. Um, so Ryan's been doing some work with the guys at uh, NOCD, helping them do some marketing, reach you great folks um, to, to get it on your phone so it can help you. Um, but Ryan has also been writing a book called The Missing Piece, A Patient's Guide to Recovery. So this is based off his notes during his, his stay as an inpatient when he was recovering from OCD. And um, we really we kind of get into that, the book, when it's coming out, what it's about. Uh, we talk about his, his work with NOCD, um, also get his OCD story. Um, we talk about, you know, what it was like to be an inpatient and, uh, and advice for those currently, uh, you know, in a hospital um, as an inpatient. So hopefully that helps. Uh, generally, you know, what helped him overcome, what's helped his improve his overall well-being. And then the general question sort of, you know, what should someone with OCD stop doing, start doing, etc. Advice for amazing life and what he'd have on a billboard. Uh, I enjoyed chatting with Ryan. He's based over in uh, Boston or that sort of area. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks again to Eddie. Uh, and uh, yeah, enjoy. On the podcast today, I have Ryan DeMont. Ryan is an OCD wellness advocate, CEO of DeMont Innovative Technologies, and the author of the forthcoming book, The Missing Piece, A Patient's Guide to Recovery, that details a holistic, systematic approach to treating OCD. He also works with NOCD, who, which are actually a sponsor of this uh, podcast. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sue. Yeah, absolutely. It's good, good to have you on. Um, and how we always start the podcast is basically to hear uh, your OCD story and you can go into as little or as much information as you want. For sure. Cool. So yeah, if you'd like to uh, explain your story. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, sure. So um, when I was 18 years old, um, I was diagnosed with like a mood disorder and, uh, and so um, I was getting worse and worse and I, I really, I didn't even know I had OCD, you know, um, mm. A lot of times OCD or in other disorders can kind of mirror them, each other. So uh, I went to McLean's Hospital, which is pretty world-renowned for psychiatric treatment. And I went in there and they were like, oh, you have OCD. And I was like, no, no, no. I was told that I have a mood disorder, you know. And so I I was um, a little, uh, I was definitely anxiety ridden. Um, but I, I went through with the treatment. And so when I was at McLean's, I, um, I, 
I really, in the beginning, um, I was overthinking about overthinking and I, you know, my symptoms actually got worse in the yeah. beginning because I didn't really know how to deal with um, OCD. And so when I was there, I struggled, I was really struggling. And at one point, my anxiety was so bad that I I couldn't sleep. I, uh, my, the, the different intrusive thoughts and, um, and the anxiety was just so high that it was really bad. And so I was at McLean's hospital and, uh, one day I was kind of, I was, I was basically like, okay, well, I have two options, right? I can, I can try to figure this out or I can kind of give into the disorder and, and just keep, you know, um, doing the compulsions and the rituals to give me the temporary relief. So, um, as I was at McLean's, I started getting better. Um, every day I would try to take one day at a time. And so I started getting better and I ended up starting to write a book. It really started out with journal entries, but I kept going with it and going with it. And then, um, I, so I ended up getting a lot better and I really, figure out how to get myself better and uh towards the end of my stay there i kind of i showed some of the doctors at mclean's hospital um like kind of how i got better and they thought um what i had done was pretty cool like uh especially hearing it from a patient they were like wow this is a little different um you you this is actually really interesting when they looked over all the journals so i ended up um finishing writing the book um I actually worked with one of the doctors on my book. And so, yeah, so I started getting better with my OCD. Um, I took one day at a time. Um, I know that a lot of times with OCD, I kind of think black and white, and it can be very overwhelming, as you know. Yeah. So um, so when I was there, I ended up meeting a guy named David Stern, and his son was on Shark Tank. So uh, when I was uh, about leaving, I ended up watching the show, and I watched – him, his son struck a deal with Mark Cuban on Shark Tank. So I kept in touch with David. And once I realized that I kind of wanted to do something, you know, um, with my book and, and, and to do um, a similar thing that NOCD is doing, um, I kept rolling with it. And I ended up cold emailing Ben, from, who was on Shark Tank. And I told him, hey, I want to really try to help people. And he's like, all right, let's, you know, so he ended up being my business partner. So now me and Ben have kind of traveled and we've been doing a lot of stuff to try to help people with um, OCD. So, and then, you know, for the past year and a half, my symptoms have been a lot less and I've been much better. Excellent. No, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah. So do, do you think, um, you know, investing your time in, in helping others, do you think that's been a positive step in your recovery? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the biggest thing I think is that you got to have, you know, to, I mean, to simply cope with OCD is, is um, what a lot of times, you know, I found myself doing just coping, really not, you know, kind of uh, progressing and then regressing. And, you know, and so when I gave myself um, something um, that I felt um, was, um, like I had a passion for, um, I really, you know, it helped me a lot because any of the, mo all the momentum that I had from getting better, I kind of kept going and I said, okay, well, you know, not only could I try to help myself, but I could help others. And it basically kind of helped me build my confidence. So not only could I deal with my OCD, but I could actually put my energy that I would be using combating my OCD now with trying to help other people. Right. So once I had a lot of like more energy from um, like that, I would have used to try to combat the, my OCD and my symptoms. I now can channel it in more of a productive way. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah, I agree. Um, and also, so um, being sort of an inpatient is not something we've, we've talked a lot about on this podcast. Um, so I'm interested to hear if you have any tips or advice for other people in that situation of how they kind of, I guess, keep their head up and keep focused on recovery. Yep. Yeah. I mean, um, the biggest thing, um, what I would say with inpatient is that you have to be patient with yourself because being inpatient um, involves 
um, either a staying there for like a you know uh, a week or 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 you know going there every day. So the biggest thing I would say is be patient. You know, realize it is a process. You're not going to get better overnight, right? Mm. But if you um, you know listen to the doctors, right, get their feedback, and then figure out what works for you. And that's the biggest thing because a lot of times us, you know, people who have crazy anxiety and have OCD, have intrusive thoughts or have any, whatever obsession they have, um, that anxiety consumes them. Um, and a lot of times we depend on medicine. We depend on what our therapist says, right? But in the end, it's really kind of up to us to try to, um, you know, use, use CBT and, and go through these ERP exercises. Um, which are pretty structured in inpatient. So um, being able to figure out how you can, you know, um, work with your doctors, um, you know, try to implement, you know, CBT um, so you can use it, you know, every day and, and, and actually get something out of your ERP, exposure um, response prevention, um, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, really good advice. Um, and generally so it could be in the past or, or present have there, have there been any sort of lifestyle changes you've made um that have helped in recovery it could be like exercise sleeping better and stuff like that yeah yeah i mean for me um you know um i've never in the you know in the past i haven't been crazy organized and so a lot of times when you have intrusive thoughts or OCD, um, sometimes you can be a little scatterbrained and you're yeah. kind of all over the place. So for me, exercise was huge. It took the edge off, right? And then what I would do is I'd have a, a nice structured routine. You know, I'd get up. I'd try to give myself tasks and, and you know, and complete each task um, so that my mind was focused on something else rather than my OCD, right? So in the beginning, when I was struggling, um, like simple distraction helps, right? Because it takes your attention off from your obsession onto something that's more productive and constructive. Um, so I would say exercise is huge. It takes the edge off. Um, doing things that you want to do, um, regardless of you having OCD or not, do the things that you would do if you didn't have it and just and do them, right? Mm -hmm. And make and make the most of each moment. So... Yeah, that's that's really good advice. I think, you know, with, with any kind of mental challenges, I think the big mis, uh, so yeah, misbelief is that you, you can't live the life you want because of these thoughts or the anxiety when actually we can. And, and it's, it's just very hard. But when we start directing our attention, as you said, towards more constructive and productive things, uh, we start to show that actually our thoughts don't have to control us. We can decide yeah. where we want to go. Yeah. 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 You can live with them. You can live with them. You can live with the thoughts, just whether it's a negative, you know, OCD thought or it's a normal thought. If you can, um, if you can, you know, realize they are there, but you have a life to live in. Really, the way I look at it is um, with having OCD, you develop these bad habits that, you know, you have an obsession, you have the anxiety, and then you ritualize or you, do a compulsion, right? So that's a, that's a habit, right? You end up making that a habit. Yeah. So if you can, for me, if you can create new habits, right? Um, and kind of, like I say, use your OC to kind of your advantage, be more proactive than reactive. That's what I, you know, a lot of times if we have OCD, um, you're more reactive to your, you're not really being proactive. You're kind of just reacting to your OCD. So by being proactive, a lot of times what that allows is, you start to change the way you think and act. And if you start to change way, the way you think and you act, right, those new positive things can become real habits, right? So then if you really think about it, if you can create that momentum, it's almost like your brain is now going to default to those good habits rather than back to the compulsions. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good way of looking at it. I like it. Okay, so... Um... What have you been doing with the guys at NOCD? How have you been working with them? Yeah, so I ended up starting um, my own company, and um, we kind of had the same philosophy. So I had reached out to Stephen over Instagram, <laughs> and I had just um, did a direct message, and I said, hey, you know, um, I have a similar um, 
philosophy and uh, purpose with my company, and I was wondering if I could help out in any way, you know. Yeah. And so I have my book and kind of like a treatment plan that I came out with, but I saw that he had done a lot of um, uh, a lot of work with the the app, right? So I ended up talking with Stephen, and um, I ended up, you know, joining their team, and um, I started off, you know, doing um, helping with the marketing on Instagram and Facebook, and interacting with the users and and being there for them, right? Whether it's, um, you know, what they can do in the moment to kind of get out of their funk, um, or give them. Uh, other advice or even, um, you know, refer them to someone who's like an OCD specialist. So I did a lot of work with the actual users of the app and people who were on social media. And so, you know, Steven's done a great job with the app. I mean, it's, the app is really developed and, um, you know, I love, I loved, and I still love working with, uh, Steven and, really um t- you know taking each day and trying to get the most out of it and you know right now um i've been we've been doing a little bit of stuff and really serving as like an ambassador right now um to help spread N O C D S message yeah okay yeah that's awesome yeah I, i'm a big fan of what those guys do too um yeah they're awesome yeah they're cool yeah. Okay, so uh, let's get on to your book. Um, it'd be good to know, you know, what it's about, um, and and I guess yeah, what what people would uh, get from it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so my book uh, tells my story, kind of how I, you know, I started out really struggling. I kept struggling, and then I started creating some momentum. I was being more proactive than reactive. And um, I ended up, you know, kind of partnering up with Ben, who was on Shark Tank, and it kind of kept moving. Um, so, and then it also, um, you know, sh- shows what I'm doing now. But the biggest part with my book is um, I really try to find things that are really practical for people. So, in psychology, it's kind of a soft science. So, they go through, um, you know, therapies like CBT, DBT, ERP. And it's very vague. It's very subjective. So if I asked you, you know, um, or I told you, um, okay, this is what CBT is. This is um, this is one example of how CBT is, right? Yeah. So what I, what I try to do in my book is I try to do it, um, try to make things very practical and easy to follow. So what I do is I try to um, create kind of like a, like I say, a road to recovery in my book where we really dive into the neurology, the psychology, and the biology of OCD. So it gives them a picture of how it operates kind of in their body, right? And then really going into CBT and um, and really showing real good examples of how they can implement that CBT every day, right? So they can build off of what they've done on day one so they can bring it to day two. So it's all about creating good habits and, and taking that momentum from one day and applying it to the next, right? Yeah. So you're building rather than just trying to implement these strategies without really any structure. So that's what I try to do in the book. Yeah. No, yeah, I love it. Um, and uh, when is it going to be out, do you think? Yeah, so my book should be out in about a month, month and a half cool. where – um, finish up editing it. It's gonna. It's um, rolled into the publisher, so it should be out in about a month and a half. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, I'll be uh, sharing that um, on social media. Um, we'll be on Amazon, and actually, uh, Stephen is gonna um, help kind of uh, bring the book to the uh, the members and the people who use NOCD app. So it'll be pretty cool. It'll be out in a month and a half so cool yeah that sounds good yeah let me know and i'll update links and stuff for sure cool cool uh okay so um sort of a generic question now what's the uh the one thing people with ocd could start doing today um the one thing that i think that people who have ocd should do today um is to to really um, center themselves and um, to be patient with themselves because without having patience and, you know, it, um, and, and taking one day at a time, 
it becomes overwhelming, right? The anxiety is so tough uh, and the thoughts keep coming. They may race and everything. So be patient with yourself and, and, you know, and try to commit to um, creating, you know, some daily changes that might be different than your normal day um, and just take one day at a time. I think that's the most realistic thing to do because to say, you know, okay, you know, you have to start thinking this way and right. Um, it just, it's not very, um, constructive because, you know, um, everyone's at different stages of their recovery. Yeah. Yeah. Really good point. Uh, yeah. Just, as you say, one day at a time, small, small daily changes make huge differences. Um, yeah. just can't necessarily see it day to day. Um, okay, so similar question then. So other than compulsions, what's one thing people with OCD could stop doing? Um, what, what, what you said, what should they stop doing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would say, um, I would say to, to try not to, um, think black and white. Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, anxiety hits, the thought comes in and they automatically go from being calm to in distress. Right. And so try not to, you know, um, realize, you know, the anxiety will pass. And so try not to think black and white. It's very hard because these thoughts are so powerful and anxiety is so strong. Um, but, to try to uh, kind of, like I said, center yourself and realize you have a choice, right? Your OCD never decides for you, right? You decide for yourself. And that's what I think a lot of times people um, feel like that they don't have a choice because things are just so strong, uh, but realize they have a choice and, you know, um, they define themselves, right? OCD Hmm. does not. So, Yeah, yeah, good point. Okay, so you're in a in an elevator um, where with someone with OCD for thirty seconds, um, they and they ask you for advice. What advice do you give them? Um, so for advice, um, I would say, you know, really um, to obviously take one day at a time, but really never give up. You know, I mean, that's the biggest thing, mm. um, and. And to take one day at a time and, you know, um, and to realize that they deserve to be happy. Um, they have a purpose, you know, uh, like myself and, and Stephen, you know, um, we were in a similar situation. And so do the, like I said, do the things that you would do regard if you didn't have OCD. Yeah. Do them and, and, and just try to, um, you know, you know, do your ERP when you can, um, and try to focus on the thoughts when you do the ERP and try not to, you know, do too many compulsions throughout the day. I know it's hard to not do them, but the more you can stay in the moment, engage, distract yourself, and then use that time when you have a half an hour to do your ERP, be focused in on the thoughts, right? Um, be self-aware of what's happening you know, know things down so then you can use what you learn from that ERP and implement it the next one into the next ERP. Yeah, yeah, really good advice. And I like the bit at the end about, you know, keeping track of your thoughts and how you deal with them because, um, yeah, you can use yeah. that that insight to improve each time. Yeah. yeah, and I think, and I really think that's what a lot of times people um it's the little things that add up. Right. Yeah. And if you can keep track of, if you can, you know, what I did, uh, so it was, I, I would document everything I did during the day. Right. So I would say, okay, I got up at seven, I did X, Y, and Z. Right. And then at eight thirty, I had an intrusive thought. And what I do is I go from zero to 100 and I, 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 um, like I rate my anxiety. So I said, okay, I had a thought at eight thirty. it was 70 out of a hundred. You're kind of subjectively saying, okay, it was 70 out of a hundred. And then what did you do after that? Right. So what you're doing is you're creating structure so that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, okay, wow, I had six productive days, but I had, yeah, I was wearing three thoughts and this was the anxiety level. Right. 
So, and then you can look back each day and reflect on what you got done, what you can improve on. So, yeah, yeah, no, I love that. I think that's that's very good advice. Um, okay, so you've got a a billboard. Uh, where are you based? Are you Boston? Bo- yes, Boston, Mass. I'm just going um, on the accent there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, my accent. I I don't realize I have it. Uh, no, that's good. I, I mean, I I've got an accent to you, right? So it's uh, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Um, so you got a billboard in Boston. Um, you can have anything written on it. it. Doesn't have to be OCT related. What would you have on that billboard? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, and you know, um, something like I said, it's the little things. Um, so I would say something that uh, something that's kind of powerful. Um, I'm trying to think what I would write. Um, something inspirational, definitely. Um, because I mean, really, the way I look at it is sometimes you know you look up at a billboard and it's just it's it's always just a company with mm. trying to sell you something, right? Yep. But if you could have a billboard that um, says like you know um, you know <laughs> you know uh, live for today and and uh, you know yeah I don't know just something. <laughs> Um, what do you call it? Inspirational, I yeah. think, would be good. Yeah, we can go for that. Live for today is good advice, anyway. The, the present moment is all we ever have. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, so yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, actually, I missed one question. Um, this podcast is about you know living an amazing life, whatever that is to each individual person. Um, and I guess what advice do you have for listeners who want to live their best life an amazing life? Yeah. I mean, the best advice, um, I have is to realize that we all, you know, we all have a purpose. We all, um, have something special we can give to the world. Right. And I, I really do believe that, right. We're not always going to um, do, you know, every day is not going to be the best day, you know, every day it's, it's, you're going to have bad, good and bad days. Um, but if you can find something that you really like, like I say, you can use your OCD to your advantage, right? Um, so really the best advice would be, um, do what you like, do what you love because, um, you'll, you'll do better at it if you do something that you really like. And, um, yeah, enjoy time with family and friends and don't let your OCD hold you back really. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. And, um, I guess lastly, is there anything else you want to say or share uh, with the listeners? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that, um, I covered a decent amount of it. I mean, I think that, um, I think in the mental health field, I, there is a lot of, um, cool things coming out and so you know like i i have my book coming out i i'm hoping that people will like it and take something from it um so i you know i think that um that the mental health field is starting to try to keep keep up with um the different disorders you know so for ocd um you know we have companies like nocd that's coming out so we're you know things are evolving um as people evolve so I think that people should, um, you know, uh, be patient with themselves and realize that there are some cool things coming out that could help them. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, uh, yeah, good insight. And I think especially with technology, things will become more accessible and, um, uh, improved in many ways as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, I, I think that, it's it is a system that I think needs to um needs to progress, right? Yeah. Um to to help people in a more uh productive way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Um and I'm excited to see what you know you do with the book and, and in future with other initiatives under your business. Um yeah, I appreciate your time on the on the show, Ryan. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Um I honestly, I, uh, when I saw it, I actually, uh, Stephen had told me about your podcast 
and I've I've seen it on Facebook and I've seen it on um, on your iPhone. They have the podcast and I've seen it a bunch of times and um, I've I've listened to it many times and I think it's such an amazing outlet to um, have people share their stories and have you actually provide some really cool um, uh, um, content that will really help people. So cool. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Ryan. I certainly did. And uh, I hope you also enjoyed the new intro music. But don't forget this episode is sponsored by CBT Solutions, uh, who are based in Baltimore. So if you're looking for treatment, uh, why not head over to cbtbaltimore.com. That's cbtbaltimore.com. Show them some love. Uh, All show notes, etc. mentioned will be on ocdstories.com backslash podcast. Until episode 88, take care. Uh, It's just a thought. Focus on your values and uh, have a good week.